Chance, if you were 25 years old, had the chance of going to WWE, make more money than you ever imagined, uh, but be a big fish in a, a small fish in a big pond, or work indies another five to seven years to make less money, but be a bigger name, how would you advise the next generation of wrestlers? Well, everyone has to do what's their own boat, but it's interesting. It's like, to me, being a quote-unquote bigger star in a smaller pond isn't really necessarily being a bigger name. Like, if, you know, you go to my Facebook and find my friends from high school, they would have had no idea who I was, or at least that I was successful at wrestling if I was an indie star, even if I was a big-name indie star. But if I'm on WWE TV, even as a middle-to-underneath guy, they're going to know who I am. So who's a bigger star is an opinion. I probably... If I was in that situation at the time, I would go with the guaranteed money because a career in supporting my family was always a priority. And also, too, you're making this decision, or presum presumably I am, without having experienced you know, any potential downside to going to WWE. And WWE can be the greatest place in the world or a very frustrating place in the world, depending on where you are or how they view you. But I've always been one looking at job security, so I would have taken the money and gone to WWE, I'm quite sure. This fella here says, Lance the Fiend was one of the most anticipated and interesting characters in WWE in the last several years, but his matches on pay-per-view are routinely uh, wrestle crap material. Where was the folly there from WWE's execution of the concept? Well, I... I personally think the concept, in a weird way, is a very throwback concept that would have worked in a different era of wrestling a lot better. Because it's an intriguing character. But for in order for that character to be what it is, he can't sell and he needs to destroy people. So if there were territories, you could bring in this character with some video packages and stuff, and people would be all really cool and interested. And then the first time he shows up with that mask and kills some dudes or no cells, there'd be this amazing buzz. And you build him up to that big match with your Hulk Hogan babyface, your Bruno San Martino babyface, your Kerry Von, wherever you are, babyface. And then he has to sell for that baby face and eventually lose, but it's in that match that's a huge gate, and then he goes to the next territory. But as soon as he's a part of regular WWE television, where you're required to wrestle the same people over again, I think the damage done to those people he no sells or that have to be afraid of him outweighs, or at least, you know, throws the balance off with the value of the intriguing character. In an era where match quality and not doing damage to your opponent, which is why we get so many non-finishes now, is so important, I think the character, while super, super intriguing, doesn't fit as well into the WWE television format. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.